Found a third plastic coated one here. This is a 0 0.022 rated at 500, showing ESR at uh, 51 ohms. This is also quite incredible. This one will have to come out too. Turning this capacitor around is again exposed that the entire thing is cracked. That is really bad. Uh, so now at this point, all these black ones are, are suspect as, as entirely defective and they're gonna have to be removed. And then we have another uh, capacitor replaced. Uh, that one will go in the bench for what it's worth for testing. I got a 0 0.047 way back there at rated 125 volts. And this one is showing a 20 ohms ESR. Another bad one. This fourth capacitor has now been replaced as well. This circuit, there was no change in the voltage. It still sits at 252. However, uh, this circuit, while being equal, uh, jumped from 209 to 213. So those two capacitors clearly were uh, weighing down the side of the house. Jumped another four volts, not bad. It's time to see just how bad these four capacitors are. Time to put them on the IT11. Uh, I have the first one set up here. This is a 0.1 microfarad rated at 500 volts. We're just gonna get started here. I got it started at three volts and we're gonna go right to leakage. And we can see that it's good at three volts, slow to six, but acceptable. Uh, 10, acceptable. Uh, we'll say 15 is acceptable. That's it. Looks like, nope, that's it. So it's rated for 500 volts and it failed somewhere between 15 and 25 volts. So yeah, that capacitor is absolute garbage and would definitely have uh, pulled this circuit down. On to the next one. Next is a 0 0.022 rated to 500 volts. Starting with three, six, ooh. Yep, yeah, somewhere between six and 10. That one's done. So, absolute garbage again. These are killer right here. Who knows what this does to your radio. Moving on to the next one, garbage. Next one is a 0 0.047 rated for 125 volts. We'll dial this back to three. Get started at three, six. Uh, no. Between six and 10, that's done. Again, rated for 125, died between six and 10. That one is garbage. Two at um, 500 volts, there's a paper or, or wax capacitor. I don't think it's gonna fare any better, but there you go, there's three volts and there's six. Shows over and that's it. So yeah, all these are, are, are terrible, the resistors. So yeah, every other one of them is probably going to read the same way. So I'm going to go through and do the same thing I did, but we're not going to make a video of every single capacitor. All I'm going to do is document the uh, voltage increases that were shown every couple of capacitors to see the uh, improvement as we alleviate the stress on the circuit. If you look carefully, you can almost start to see some glowing activity on the magic eye tube as the voltage increases. We're not there yet, but we're getting close. These two black capacitors up top are rated for 125 volts and read an ESR of 22 ohms. Both of them read about 22 ohms. And those two capacitors have now been replaced. Uh, it looks like they sit here on the finals. I don't know what kind of value they'll bring, but I mean, based on the ESR, it, it can't hurt. I got 110 volts on the input. I'm seeing 261 on the first side of the capacitor. That's a notable improvement right there. On the second side, seeing, and this one fluctuates. So we're seeing uh, um, 206, 207, 208. So we'll say, split the difference, say 207. Sometimes it bounces up there. But uh, yeah, I guess those capacitors did have an effect on it. So we'll say, oh, it's hard to say. 207 and 260. That's a jump from 252. 
and like I said, this one's bouncing around, so it's hard to tell. Also, the standing watts under the same condition is sitting around 54, 55 watts, where before it was in the 70s under the exact same parameters. So that is a significant power reduction. Uh, we're going to keep going, keep moving along one capacitor at a time. I have a lot of old stock European capacitors as well. These are, uh, you know, wrapped aluminum. They're not electrolytic by any means. And this is rated for 400. And like these are just perfect. Um, if I go to leakage, you can see that there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They test just fine. And I could use some of these in the circuit too. Uh, they've never been used before. They're brand new. And I'm going to augment some of these as well and not use all of my new ones because I don't have to. Especially for this particular capacitor replacement, this is how the uh, original resistor was wrapped around the uh, older capacitor. The, uh, but the post ripped out before I could continue testing, so just had to stop there. Move this uh, 0.01 at 125. There's another one still in there. Move this one now. Threw it up on the meter. Rated 125. Died between 10 and 15. That one's out of there. I do believe it's time for another voltage check. Let's take a quick voltage check at the... Uh, at the main electrolytics and see what we got. Perfect 110 volt input right now. We're seeing between 215 and 216. And on the other one, 253. Yeah, that, that one fluctuates a little. Between 251 and 254, we'll say 253. And 216. Little increase on this side, uh, one volt, whatever, that's fine. Uh, does show three volt increase on this side. So moving up. This 125 made it all the way up to between 15 and 25. I think this is the best performance I've seen yet. And I'm looking at this one way back here, rated to a thousand volts DC, and I'm, I'm thinking that this can't be good at all. I gotta take a look at this one. But I'm I'm seeing the, the cap broken off on this side, and I just, I just don't know. This is this is gonna be one of the picofarad ones I'm gonna actively test. And besides, it looks like this yellow wire is about to rip off of here anyway, so it needs work. I might as well just clip this out, test it, and just put a new one in anyway, just because it looks disgusting. Pulling this one out, I see that this one had, had melted a long time ago. And you could see the inside of this capacitor, the uh, tar that was used to cover it, had had melted off. I'm going to hook it up and see what we got. Ready to 1,000 volts. 3 volts. And we're done. So 3 volts or less. Full short. Or, yeah, passing current 3 volts. So I didn't expect much more from this since it had already melted. Pulled out this 100 microfarad capacitor. This is electrolytic, obviously. Uh, this is the replacement. This is one of the easy things about technology as they've gotten smaller. Pulled it out uh, from all the way in these recesses here and I'll be throwing the new one in I'm going to be measuring this electrolytic capacitor it's going to be measured differently under both electrolytic and minilytic uh, not like the other ones it's not as stringent but I'd like to see the condition of this one to minilytic of uh, 15 18 volts is all we get I could probably only max it out on 25 on this thing and pull it down anyway if there's leakage um, we're already done and there we have that new one installed. That takes care of a, a, a large electrolytic capacitor removed from this circuit now. For those paying close attention, I realize this does leave a pink elephant in the middle of the room, which is the filter caps, of course, which are original. I've, I've left them in for a reason. I, I want this to be the, the last ones to go. I want to do some analysis on these once I've replaced all the other caps, pulling the circuit down and, and not having any, any of that drag. I want to see what the condition is of the DC itself and how much this is actually leaking to ground as I finally uh, cut these over to new capacitors. And there are some remaining black ones in here. And we could see one over there. We could see one over there. And, and they are quite terrible. We know that there is excessive leakage coming out of those things. So until they are identified, there really is no way forward. See another 50 microfarad electrolytic capacitor here on the top side as well. It's rated to 4 volts, but it failed at 3, and I can't test lower than 3. I'll just assume that it didn't work. I have replaced this 
and put a modern uh, capacitor in its stead. This is a complete rework of the top end at this point and no original capacitors anymore. From this last cap rated at 125 back on our uh, paper cap setting drop down to 3 volts and yep there we go loaded up 3 volts and and that's it. Somewhere between 3 and 6 volts it is gone. It's time to take a look at the DC actually coming off the capacitors. We'll test one at a time and look at it on the oscilloscope. For reference purposes, we'll show this as 234 volts with a peak to peak of 8 volts. This will be a reference point. We'll go to the next one and we'll have these recorded so that when I use a temporary uh, uh, a capacitor, we'll see how much of a difference there is. Next one is showing 254 volts with a peak to peak of 2 volts. That side seems a bit healthier, much more uh, pure DC, uh, obviously lower peak to peak. We're just recording these values, so that's all we're doing. Swap it out and see what the results are uh, after the swap out. I've rigged up two modern capacitors and tied off those leads to it. Uh, the other capacitor is in there, disconnected. We can take the same readings and see what we got. A 234, 236, and fluctuating between uh, 6 or 8 volts, peak to peak. The other one is showing 254 volts with a 2 volts peak to peak. Quite honestly, when you look at the before and after uh, of this capacitor swap out for testing, uh, I see little to no improvement between the original electrolytic cap and the replacement capacitor. I want to reevaluate one more time using the Fluke, but beyond that, I'm really not seeing a difference, so I may not swap out the electrolytic filter cap. So I'm working with this right now, the first segment of the capacitor, and I'm on electrolytic. I'm going to point that out. This is like the worst of the three settings. We know that this sees regularly in excess of 250 volts. And I'm at 150 now. We know, we know the capacitor is not broken. We know that it's not, not destroyed or anything. But at 150, it's, it's, it's taken a while to, uh, to charge up. And this is 200. And I'm seeing some flickering, and it's hard to show on the camera. You see, there's something going on here with this with this capacitor. And people who watch my movies know that this test set is, is regularly checked. There's something here in this cap that some arcing or 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 a breakdown of some kind this is 200 volts and 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 because of the way this test set reacts i could tell you right now that we're probably looking at about 180 volts because we're definitely not getting the 200. All right 200 would assume that we were on paper mica and there is zero current flowing this is very current sensitive and it pulls down real quick and and i'm still seeing um i'm not trying focus here I'm still seeing artifact on the side which tells me that you know we're in a couple thousand microamps we're in, we're in milliamps here of current flowing and it, it's bouncing back up now and again so I want to I'm going to take it up to 250 and, and by the way this is rated for like 350 so we're not we're not even near the capacitor's rating but this is now 250 what what we generally see on this capacitor and yeah I th this could be letting hum through no doubt you know my, my other test that I'm doing with the oscilloscope could mask that but you know it's like it's trying but but as it as it's it should just be opening up and it's sort of flickering and then closing again Maybe not as, as healthy as I initially thought. Yeah, I'm going to call it, you know, 250 volts on, on electrolytic, the absolute worst setting possible. This thing sees in excess of 250 volts and it's no good. And we're in the middle of testing the other side now coming in at 150 volts. And the other side is looking okay, 150. We're at 200. 200 is looking okay. Um, the slow charge has to do with the uh, amount of current that this is limited to, by the way. We start getting up to 50 um, microfarads and it does take some time. 
you know, this side of the capacitor is definitely looking healthier than the other one. The other side of the capacitor has clearly got some issues. That said, I just swapped both of them out at this point. This is more of just a, a demonstration already. But we're at 250 now. Didn't quite make it to 300, but it really tried. You know, this side looked better, like I said. Didn't make its rated performance at Electrolytic, uh, but that was just a test at this point. But, um, yeah, this side, at least, at least it would have worked uh, if need be. If, if both of them made it uh, to this kind of performance, I probably would have left it alone.